Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my To Be Read pile for August and September 2024. So before we head into my TBR for August and September, my TBR for June, July went very successfully, uh, very successfully to the point that this TBR, I was able to go ahead and start early, which I love that. I love when my previous TBR finishes up early enough that I can kind of get going into my next one. That way I can incorporate a couple additional books. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a plus. Uh, it's always a plus being able to incorporate a couple more additional books. Uh, so yeah, for the most part, my previous TBR for June, July went very well, as I said. Uh, definitely some ups and downs in there, but uh, still really highly enjoyable. Um, I think I think one of the highlight books that I read from that particular TBR was Lee Bardugo's The Familiar. I loved that book. Uh, there were definitely a lot of issues and problems with that book, but my enjoyment of like the plot and the characters just I, I enjoyed all that so much like any problems and issues I had with just the rest of the book I didn't care I love the plot and the characters that made up for it <laughs> so yeah uh, the familiar by Lee Bardugo definitely a highlight um so yeah let's get into my TBR for August September I have a lot here and yeah I'm gonna be sharing all these books with you uh, like pretty much in no particular order <laughs> so let's get going so as i've been doing all year thus far i have been wanting to get through a reread of all of my philippa gregory books um i've said before i feel like i just don't get to reread often um and rereading is something i love and enjoy doing i love revisiting places and characters and stories you know and uh, yeah I mean as you can see from my shelf I mean I have a whole shelf over here I got more shelves over here I have shelves everywhere littered with books and yes I love consuming new books but yet rereading uh, I feel like I just don't ever really get enough time so I wanted to take the time this year to at least get through like a reread of all of my Philippa Gregory books because I I personally love Philippa Gregory's historical fiction. Um, so yeah, well not only a reread of Philippa Gregory, but there's also a small scattering of some of her books that I have not gotten to yet. So I figured while I'm doing my reread, also throw in the brand new books as well. You know, so yeah, one of those brand new books I have yet to get to from Philip Gregory, Philip Gregory, weirdly enough, is uh, this one right here, uh, Three Sisters, Three Queens. Uh, this is kind of one of the newer books that was released in the Tudor Plantagenet series. And yeah, for, for whatever reason, I just never got around to it. So yeah, I'm, I'm really super happy to finally be getting around to this. And yeah, my understanding of what this book is about. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to read the plot synopsis because I can't quite remember what it is about. Uh, when Catherine of Aragon is brought to the Tudor court as a young bride, the oldest princess Margaret takes her measure. With one look, each knows the other for a rival, an ally, a pawn, destined uh, with Margaret's younger sister Mary to a unique sisterhood. The three sisters will become the queens of England, Scotland, and France. So yeah, that's pretty much my basic understanding of this book. It's, it's focusing not only on Catherine of Aragon to some degree, but I think it's very heavily going to be focused on uh, King Henry VIII's sisters, Margaret and Mary, which is, what, which is what I am personally looking forward to the most. I feel like Margaret and Mary don't get a lot of, they don't get a lot of love in like Tudor historical fiction. So I'm super excited to read this book. And yeah, another big giant beast of a Philippa Gregory book. So then uh, after I am done, as I toss uh, that book over there to my bed, when I'm done with that book, uh, I am planning on doing a reread of The Other Bowling Girl. <laughs> uh, I know The Other Bowling Girl is very highly controversial, but I fucking love this book, you guys. <laughs> uh, let me throw an F-bomb in there. I love The Other Bowling Girl. Um, uh, 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 yes, another huge, gigantic uh, book. And what you need to know about The Other Bowling Girl, if you've never read it, if you're not aware of everything going on with this book, um, it, it's, it's not really in the point of view from Anne Boleyn, who was uh, Henry VIII's second wife. It's actually not in her point of view. It's in the point of view of Anne Boleyn's sister, um, Mary, Mary Boleyn. <laughs> uh, so she's telling this whole story, uh, the rise and fall of the Boleyn family, and yeah, her own role within it. Uh, Mary Boleyn at one point being 
and Mistress to Henry VIII. And I used to reread this book all the time. You guys, before my book buying obsession grew out of hand, uh, I used to read this book like on a yearly basis. A yearly basis. That's how much I love and enjoy this book. <laughs> So after I'm done with all of that, I'm going to read this really random miscellaneous series right here, you guys. And this is a series that has been lying around on my shelves for a very long time. And uh, once you see what this is, you're going to kind of realize how long this has been sitting on my shelves. Um, because this comes from the world of the TV series Once Upon a Time. <laughs> Um, if you don't know what the TV series Once Upon a Time was about, um, it ran for a pretty lengthy amount of years, about, I, I think about eight seasons, I want to say, I think it ran for about eight seasons, and it, it, it was essentially a family show that was a big mashup of, like, all of your favorite Disney properties, all your favorite Disney characters and princesses and all of that and they all just intermingled and there's like big huge stories where they all intermingled and they all had to stop like big huge evils and Disney villains from taking over the world you know so that's essentially the basis and the crux of the Once Upon a Time TV show. I loved that show it was just so quaint and charming very family friendly um just so sweet and perfect uh, I had a lot of issues with that last season of Once Upon a Time but it's okay <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah I, I got these three books that went with the show and I really wish I had read these books when they initially came out because I have a feeling I'm going to read these and there's going to be a lot of stuff that I have probably forgotten, characters I've forgotten, uh, and I'm, I'm a little concerned I might not like these that much. But you, you know, especially since the show, the show is done and over with. It's been done and over with for quite a number of years now. So I'm going to see how this read goes of these books. Um, but yeah, the very first book in this series, um, we have uh, Regina Rising, uh, and she played, and Regina was the the evil queen on this show. You know, I neglected to mention that. Not only was Once Upon a Time a mashup of like all your favorite Disney properties, the thing of it is that they all got trapped, all the characters got trapped in some crazy curse, and they were like sent to like our modern day world where they got like different modern personas and they had no recollection of who they were who their disney counterpart was <laughs> does that make sense so yeah regina the character of regina was supposed to be like the evil queen and yeah she has such a wonderful redemption arc yeah guys i love regina and then the next book in the series is Red's Untold Tale. If you can't tell, this is related to the character of Red Riding Hood. And I really liked her character on the show, too. She was a really vastly underused character, but when she appeared, I liked her. And then this third book, uh, Henry and Violets. Uh, Henry was like the son of, a, of another particular character on the show. I'm not going to get into the whole backstory, but he was like the son of, of a character. And yet yeah, Violet was his, his love interest at one point on the show. Uh, I have a feeling this book, uh, I'm not really going to particularly care for this book, but because it was part of the Once Upon a Time series here, I wanted to get it and complete the collection. So yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm still looking forward to these three books. I love the world of Once Upon a Time, but I am a little concerned, you know, since the show has been done and over with, I'm a little concerned my level of of interest <laughs> but we shall see how it goes next up you guys i want to read two books by ruth ware so let me start here for for whatever reason ruth ware's very first book uh this one right here in in a dark dark wood for whatever reason i i just totally skipped over this book uh, my very first book with Ruth Ware was The the Woman in Cabin 10, I believe is the title of that one. That was my very first Ruth Ware book. And, um, and, and ever since, I have collected every single Ruth Ware book. And again, for whatever reason, I just never got around to reading this very first book. Because <laughs> as you can see, it's in paperback. I don't even have a hardback copy because all of my Ruth Ware books are in hardback. So for this TBR, I'm going to make the attempt to completely get caught up with Ruth Ware by finally reading her very first book, like I said, In a Dark, Dark Wood. So uh, what is this about? You know what? There is absolutely no plot synopsis on here. What the hell? Oh my God. What is it about? It doesn't tell me what it's about. Uh all it says is it says it's an instant New York Times bestseller, soon to be a major motion picture. What? Uh, where is our plot? Uh, oh my god, you guys, there is no plot on here. 
Seriously. What is this book even about? I, I can't see I'm filming. I'm filming with my phone right now. I can't even get on anything to look up a Goodreads synopsis to even tell you guys what this is about. Oh no, seriously, what is this book about? Does anybody know what this book is about? I guess I'll find out. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. I don't know what this book is about. It's a Ruth Rare book. I'm going to enjoy it, I think. <laughs> so coinciding with my my read for the very first time of In a Dark Dark Wood, I'm going to read the latest book by Ruth Ware that just came out this year. And this is One Perfect Couple. And thank God this one has a plot synopsis. So I can at least read the plot synopsis for this one for you guys. Uh, Lila is a bit, it, Lila is in a bit of a rut. I can read. Uh, her postdoctoral research has fizzled out. She's pretty sure they won't extend her contract and things with her boyfriend Nico, an aspiring actor, aren't going great. When the opportunity arises for Nico to join the cast of a new reality TV show, One Perfect Couple, she decides to try out with him. A whirlwind audition pr uh, process later, Lila finds herself whisked off to a tropical paradise with Nico, boating through the Indian Ocean toward Ever After Highland, where the two of them will compete against four other couples um, in order to win a cash prize. But not long after they arrive on the deserted island, things go wrong. Of course they do. After the first challenge leaves everyone rattled and angry, an overnight storm takes matters from bad to worse. Cut off from the mainland by miles of ocean, deprived of their phones and unable to contact the crew that brought them there, the, the group must band together for survival. As tensions run high and fresh water runs low, oh no, Lila finds that this TV show is all too real and the stakes are life and death. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love, I, I, I have a feeling I'm going to really highly enjoy this book, I'm hoping, because uh, it's definitely playing with the whole idea of you know, reality, TV show, uh, competitions, and you know, the, the romance stuff like The Bachelor, you know, all that bullshit. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this because I think this is going to be a big, huge, heavy commentary on the state of reality television. The next book that I plan on reading for my TBR is this one right here, The Ministry of Time by by Kayleen, Kayleen Bradley. Is that what it says? Kayleen? I think this is Kayleen Bradley. Um, out of all the books on this TBR, I am looking forward to this book the most, you guys. Let me read it to you if you don't know what this book is about. In the near future, a civil servant is offered the salary of her dreams to work on a top secret project. A recently established government ministry is gathering expats from across history to establish whether time travel to establish whether time travel is feasible for the human body but also for the fabric of space-time. Uh, she is tasked with working as a bridge, living with, assisting, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring the expat known as 1847, or Commander Graham Gore. As far as history is concerned, Commander Gore died on the Sir John Franklin's, uh, he died on Sir John Franklin's doomed 1845 expedition to the Arctic. So he's a little disoriented to be living with an unmarried woman who, regular, who regularly shows her calves, surrounded by outlandish concepts such as washing machines, Spotify, and the collapse of the British Empire. But with an appetite for discovery, a seven-a-day seven cigarette habit, and the support of a charming and chaotic cast of fellow expats, he soon adjusts. Over the next year, what begins as an excruci excruciatingly uncomfortable housemate dynamic evolves into something much deeper. By the time the true shape of the ministry's project comes to light, the bridge has fallen haphazardly, uh, fervently in love, with consequences she never could have imagined. Forced to confront the choices that brought them together, the bridge was finally reckoned with whether what she does next can change the future. So there's a, there's a tiny bit of a, like an outlander vibe to this book. So yeah, my impression of what this book is about, it's taking place kind of in the near future, it sounds like, and the government has come up with like this time travel sort of thing onto off to the side, and they're going through history like collecting people through history to make like a group or something. I don't know. And yeah, one of the guys that they bring back is a guy that was part of that really doomed Franklin ex expedition where uh, they were all trying to find like the Arctic Circle, I think is what it was, or, or a, a passage through the, the Northwest, uh, like a passage through the Northwest Passage, something like that. And yeah, they all freaking died. All of those guys died and where'd they all go? What happened exactly? And yeah, there's that really great uh, TV series and book uh, by Dan Simons, The Terror, um, that kind of takes a really supernatural approach to that whole expedition. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited 
to get to this book. It sounds like it's going to be like a bizarre romance that this this lady who works for the government she's going to fall in love with Commander Gore. It's going to be great. I'm here for it. <laughs> And yeah, guys, I do have room for one more book that I'll, I'll be able to squeeze out at the very end of September. So let's go to my TBR jar here. And once again, I neglected to shuffle this book. So I'm going to kind of dig somewhere here near the top or near the, the middle. Let me see if I can dig out something really good. Because all of my new books go at the very top of this, obviously. So I need to shuffle it again. Uh-oh, don't fall out. It's all going to fall out. Oh, no. Okay, there we go. So my favorite part, the unveiling. What book did I pick out? Ooh, okay. This is going to be a nice book here because this is something kind of short and simple. Uh, let me find it. It's it's somewhere in this room. I just got to figure out where it is. <laughs> Give me a second. So the book that I picked from my TBR jar is this book right here. It is a young adult book and this is Blood Countess by Lana Popovic. <laughs> um, and I do believe this is a book that was in like another language and it was translated if I'm not mistaken. Um, I can't remember what language originally, but I'll, I'll have to look that up once I actually get into the book. But yeah, uh, what this book is about, a 16 year old uh, Anna Dar Darvulia has just begun working as a scullery maid for Countess Elizabeth Bathory, a woman as enigmatic as she is beautiful. When Elizabeth takes a liking to Anna, she is vaulted to chambermaid status and begins to reside in the Countess's private suite, far from the filthy, drafty servants' quarters below. For the ambitious Anna, it's a dream. She receives wages generous enough to provide for her family, and the lonely, calculating Countess, whose cruel husband is often away at war, begins to groom Anna as her friend, confidant, and eventual lover. Oh my god. No sooner does Elizabeth beguile Anna entirely than Elizabeth's perfect facade begins to crack, and when others in her employ disappear, Anna begins to fear the person she's begun to love has crossed over into madness, or worse. Then come the murders, and Anna knows it's only a matter of time before Countess Elizabeth, Countess Elizabeth turns on her as well. After she tries to thwart the Countess's atrocities, Anna realizes she isn't the Countess's friend or lover, she's her prisoner, and if she stays any longer, she may well become her perfect foil. Ooh. So yeah, this is like a kind of a retelling of the, of the tale of uh, Countess Elizabeth Bathory, all of those, like, all the gossip and scandal with her, because she's like, she's kind of like one of the most pro prolific, like, female serial killers, like, during this this time period. I think like, God, what does this take place? Seriously, when does this take place? The 1600s? 1800s? 1500s. Yeah, it takes place in like the very late 1500s and Elizabeth of Bathory was kind of, like I said, she's kind of this notorious prolific female serial killer of the time period and she uh, killed like a lot of young women and yeah, there's a lot of rumors and gossip and scandal uh, like, ooh, she was a vampire. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's a big thing of like she liked to bathe in the blood of her victims, you know, whether that's true or false, who knows, but it kind of l l l lent credence to the whole thing of she was a vampire, you know. <laughs> uh, so uh, I love, uh, I, I, I really like the story of Elizabeth Bathory. I'm not entirely like 100% familiar with it. Um, so yeah, this book would be a nice little gateway to kind of get more into it and do further research as I go. <laughs> so you guys, that is it for my TBR. In the comments below, any of these books that you guys have enjoyed previously, did you like them? Did you hate them? Let me know so I can be prepared. Uh, what do you guys plan on reading for the next couple months or so? So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.